kings and queens are recorded in history. And as I looked this year at Christ the King, I looked up 20 greatest kings of the world. I am amazed by the symmetrism in much of their lives and what I find a common denominator and common factor in their lives. There are certain statements that is said of almost every one of them, but the one which you cannot argue about is that they lived and they died within a particular period. And there are epithets of them, tombstones that record that here lies the remains of King with all their titles. And I am amazed that it reminded me that irrespective of who we are and what we are, would occupy space, time, and matter. But there comes a time when we die. I also saw of these kings and their kingdoms, their kingship had boundaries and certain subjects under their rule. One king cannot claim dominance beyond their boundary, their geographical boundary. They were limited. They were elected or they came in succession by rights of their family line and they had particular demarcations, boundaries through which they exercised their rules or their rule. I also recognize that they are remembered because of their military power, their prowess, their economic development, their physical and structural changes they made in the community in which they were kings over. Great monuments built by them, roads and other infrastructural development, the all characteristics of their kingship. Some of them extended their territorial boundaries through wars of less powerful nations. They conquered them and they added more into their leadership. But this morning I want to speak of King Jesus. I want to speak about this king who comes into the judgment hall and Pilate sees him and Pilate asks him a question, are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? And I'm sure many of us would ask that question or have asked that question sometime in our lives. And what I notice is that whenever Jesus is asked a question to trap him, he usually gives no answer but follows with another question. This king finds another king, the one who was going to pronounce his judgment. And that king says, are you a king? Jesus saw through him. He saw the emptiness of his life. He saw that in his life he was confronted with four basics of his human life. He saw that in the question that this king asks, there were certain things that he could not answer. This earthly king could not deal with evil, nor justice, nor love, nor forgiveness. This king, simple but powerful. Of all that I have read, in all that I have listened to, I've captured this, or I'm convinced that one of those who made the most poignant statement about this king is George Frederick Handel. In the great masterpiece of his writing in music, in the Alleluia Chorus. And he says this about this king. The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. 
And every time he puts the word ever, he puts hallelujah, which cannot be translated. And this king shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Let me speak of this king first of all. In Christ we have someone who has completely changed every aspect of human life. This king changed historical records. The human calendar was changed at his birth. And today we are 2018 years after his death, burial and resurrection. This king came to a world he made himself. And yet he came and submitted himself to that. And after he died, the history of life and mortality changed. And calendar changed as well. Second, this king, his life and work are unique in that they hold together in the servanthood ministry, coined and supported by the reality of God's truth. He says he is truth. And those who are part of his kingdom or belong to his kingdom are citizens of the truth. If you read the account, Pilate asked the question, what is truth? And that's a million dollar question that is still asked today. When truth is no longer absolute but relevant, Jesus has been pushed to the corner. And many of us who are Christians should be ashamed when we keep flicking from what we know is not the truth. Because we want to save our skin. His life and work hold together in the servanthood ministry. No one else in history is qualified or capable to meet the needs of a fallen humanity or capable to restore that which was lost in fallen man's history. Jesus, the King of Kings, brings about deliverance from bondage of sin and sets us free from evil and judgment. Thirdly, he was born as a king. Even though some succeed in the throne of their ancestral line, this one was born as a king. But not with pomp, not with majesty, not in a palace, but in a stable. He became low so that the lowest of man can really affiliate with him. He became low so that he can lift us up to higher paths. He became what we are so we can become what he is. Born in a stable. Even before he was born, the message about his life came ahead of him. He was a fulfillment of the prophecy of this king, this son of God, or the one equal with God. But also I find that this king is a king born not for himself, but for the world. To save his people from their sins. Here is the bedrock truth about our life and our reconciliation with God. He came that we might be forgiven. So that we might be made whole. And this king... Is for everyone, not just the Jews, like Pilate was saying, you are the king of the Jews, or what was placed as a mockery over his cross. Jesus is for everyone, and everyone who comes to Jesus takes the title, the change of name. They become Christians because of Christ. They become Christ's own, Christ's property. Jesus is not just for you and I, it's for the world. This king wants to be king of all. Because that's why he came. He came to die for the sins of the whole world. His death, burial, and resurrection continue to speak and do more than the limited years he spent on earth. They crucified him to silence him. But death could not hold him down, nor the grave. He rose from the dead. 
Kings usually live, live in palaces, not so. They live in big castles. But King Jesus lives in the hearts and lives of people. Amen. Amen. Men and women who acknowledge and receive the truth of his sacrifice as God's only way to salvation. Men and women who come to acknowledge that the problem between man and God is not our looks, nor our historical background, but sin. Men and women who submitted themselves not to doing but to receiving what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Men and women whose lives are subjected to God and the sacrifice offered by Christ for the sin of mankind. This king lives in the hearts and lives of many who have lived before us, lives in our lives today, and will continue to live in the lives of those who will come after us until Jesus comes again. Not in a palace, not in a church building, but in the hearts of men. Not a crown of gold and diamond or silver or precious stones, but a crown of thorns, a servant, a sacrifice, and yet a king. What I find interesting as I made comparisons with all these kings in history, kings protected themselves. Part of what they will do is to raise up an army that will watch over their safety. This king, even though he was all powerful, who could be protected by angels and legions of angels, was a king born to die. Others protected their lives. He offered himself on the cross for you and for me. What a savior, what a king we have. But I want you to know that Jesus' kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. And you and I are born into God's kingdom when we come to Jesus by faith. We receive what is called everlasting life. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything is able, able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We register once and we become part of his army. Time ceases to be effective over our lives. We live here on earth as citizens of two kingdoms, the earthly kingdom, but looking forward to living and living with Jesus forever. What a glorious king we have. And Christians are promised a place in that kingdom. I go to prepare a place for you, so that where I am there you may be also. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's the truth. Register now and register forever. Be part of his kingdom by surrendering your life and my life to him. He was a servant king. And the more we are a part of his kingdom, the more we learn to be servants of God. But that's not all. This king is coming again. Amen. Amen. In one of the readings for this morning, he says, Every eye shall behold him. Let me paint a picture for you. The Bible says when Jesus comes again, when this king comes again to take those who are of his kingdom with him, there will be a shout. So there will be audible voice. There will be the shout of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And then he says it will be visible. Every eye shall behold him. Not just Christians. Everyone shall see him. Everyone shall see him not as the babe in the manger, but the conquering king who comes, not with a host of army, but to receive those who are part of his kingdom. We will see him, we will hear him, and my friends, we will be with him.
forever. This king, his name is Jesus. As I round up, I just remember my childhood song, which we sang at Sunday school, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. This Jesus who loves me is King of Kings and is Lord of Lords. And he's coming. To go, may God, the Creator, lead you and enable you to be creative. May Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, enable you to bring reconciliation in broken relationships. May the Holy Spirit inspire us that each day of our lives would allow Him to walk in us producing out of us that for which we are made in God's image. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all your loved ones, both far and near, now and forever. Amen. Amen.